Alrighty, today we're going to be looking at how to import footage into Buju and then export a 3D camera into 3ds Max and then we'll try and make a scene out of it. So the first thing you want to do inside Buju is go to the import sequence button. If you can't see it, there's all these different things here and you want to make sure it's on the toolbox. So come up here, import sequence and we'll just find the file and users desktop and track and you want to make sure the sequence you're importing is a JPEG sequence so if you go into like After Effects and you just have to export into a JPEG sequence and then you'll be able to import it so then we've got 1 to 353 frames so that's sweet and depending on, you have to check your frame rate as well when you export it, this is really important um, and I export it at 23.976 and if you don't if you don't change that it's gonna affect the footage it's gonna be all kind of floating off the ground and it won't look right so just click apply and close now you can see we can scrub through and we've got this surface that we're gonna try and track and we're gonna try and put an object on in 3ds max so the first thing you're gonna want to check is go to task view and the system, I don't know why Bougie does it, but it always tries and changes this back to 25 and that causes problems. So always try and just go back in there after you apply everything and just change it again. And you have to, if you go into here, oops, sorry, wrong one, into focal length, and you've got like a zoom in your shot. At the moment, my, my thing's not really moving. I haven't, I'm not zooming in and out, it's constant. But if you've got zoom in, just change it to varying and that'll fix that up. Alright, this is a pretty simple shot, so just go to track features, you can leave all this the same pretty much, uh, just leave it the same, and just start it, and then you'll see all these little points, it's going to try and get some hard hard edges on it, and there's a good point, these are probably the good points, there's a white square there, and the corners of the television, and the speaker, and usually this is probably the longest process apart from the, the camera solve just and you might have to do this a couple of times just to make sure that you get all the points in so I'll just cut back to this when it's finished tracking alrighty so our camera solve just finished and now you can see we've got all these squiggly lines going all over the screen and this is basically the computer saying Oh, this is a 2D point. This is a 2D point, and then we run this. When we run the camera solve, it's gonna run an algorithm which is gonna make everything, all these different points, of the 3D space. So then the computer will know. Oh, okay, that's back there, and this points forward, and then it can create a virtual plane that we can place stuff on in 3ds Max. So if we go into the camera solve, and just tick these two: radial distortion and camera path smoothness, and then just click start and sometimes this might take a while or it might be really quick so we shall see and it looks like it's going to be fairly quick and this free and the solve just finished and now we have all our 3D points They seem pretty good. We will see. Alrighty, so if we go 3D mode, if you hold down shift, you can zoom around and rotate. And middle button in holding shift is that. And that's pretty much all you need to know. Okay. So it thinks our camera is all the way up here, which it really isn't. So this is the scene that it's, it's made out. It thinks that's probably the TV, that's the bench, and this is the cabinet next to it. 
which isn't correct at all. So you want to go into here, and then we want to rotate the whole scene. So that looks a little bit better. And you want to try and make your plane, so this is obviously the table, you want to make this flat onto the ground plane. Which is looking quite good. That looks pretty that looks pretty good. Yeah. Okay. Now comes the tricky bit. If we go into 3ds Max, you can see that we have the Y axis going that way and the X axis going that way. Buju thinks that the Y axis is actually the Z axis, so everything's going to be all weird if we don't fix that. And, and the Z axis is also going up here. So if we go back into Buju, we want to go into 3D Tasks, Edit, Edit Geometry. And we want to make this, get a point here, and find maybe another point back here. And maybe a point there, so we kind of create a straight line. And we can say Add Coordinate from Hint. And we want to make this the y-axis, because the y-axis is going that way. And then we'll have to make the x-axis. So, maybe that one, that one, and that one, and that one. Add coordinate from hint, and x-axis. Good. Now we need a z-axis. This is usually the hardest one if you don't have much vertical space in it. So maybe just this one, or this one and this one. This will work. We only need two for this one. Z axis and boom. And then you need to click update coordinate frame. And let's just add an origin one. So Add coordinate from here, and let's just make that the origin. So when we import 3ds Max, that point is going to be the center of our scene. Now let's go back to 3D and see what they did. And now the ground plane looks a lot better. Quite a lot better. Looks like it's stuck a lot more to the ground, which is excellent. Okay. So we've put our scene out, we've got it all organized, now we can export it for 3ds Max and see how it turned out. So let's go export, export camera solve, and 3ds Max. Now let's scale up the scene by about 100, and browse, and let's just put it into the track folder, and let's go track 3ds Max. Perfect. And save. Alrighty, so that exported that. Now you come up to Max Script Run Script. And for some reason, sometimes it's not going to like it, so you'll go in here and it'll be error. And this reason is you just need to take out this line of code, this little bit, and just press delete and save that. And then just try and rerun the script. And voila. We now have our camera in 3ds Max. Now that the test is, if we go viewport background and we go into files, we can go into our desktop and find the track. So we'll just get the track and let's just get that and make it a sequence. So open, we've got the 353 frames and animate the background, match the rendering output, OK. And now we've got our plane moving around in 3ds Max. Excellent. But there you go, so that's how you import 3ds Max objects camera from Buju into 3ds Max.
and I'll just go into After Effects and see how this turned out. Alrighty, so now we're in After Effects, so we just need to import our rendered footage. So if we go to the folder, Track Render, and here's our outputted 3ds Max render. I rendered it in Open EXR because that gives us an alpha channel which we can import into After Effects so we don't have, we can overlay it over our footage. So here's our track that we just exported from 3ds Max and let's tr put that on top of there. And at first you'll see if we turn it down to about quarter resolution. Here we go. If we do a quick render of this, you'll quickly see that it's it's just floating everywhere. It doesn't look anything like what we wanted. It's just it's just floating all over the place. And the way we can fix this is if we go into here, right mouse click on it, interpret footage, main, and we click that. And here you can see it's changed it, it's interpreting this sequence as 30 frames per second. So if we change this to 24, you'll quickly see that the whole scene will align perfectly. Hang on, just drag that out. That's excellent. And now it's perfectly going to fit that that space. And I did quick render of it at 24 frames per second. And this is what it turned out like. Tracked very well. Alrighty, so that's how you that's pretty much it. I mean, with more complicated scenes, that that's pretty much all you need to do and it will track in perfectly. So I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Um, in the future, probably a couple of days, I'll probably do it extreme, like full-on, lots of explosions, buildings crumbling, um, Buju to 3ds Max to After Effects color correction tutorial. And we'll look at all, all the different techniques and what you need, like people running in front of the frame, and we'll just we'll cut it down to the bare bones and see how we go. Alrighty, so I'll see you all next time.